Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting a case of three vessel PCI that was done with minimal contrast use, actually we use 18 cc. The case is a 78 year old man with history of hypertension. He was not diabetic and non-smoker. He had angina on exertion despite full medical therapy. He also had renal impairment with an estimated GFR of 35. The patient had diagnostic angiography done which showed a large LID that had a mid-critical lesion that involved a large diagonal. There was also a critical lesion in a large OM with an anticritical plaque in the mid -circ. Also there was a suspicion of a critical stenosis at the ostium of the LID that was not very clear during diagnostic angiography. One view of the RCA showed the proximal subtotal occlusion. Since the patient had a three vessel disease with renal impairment and there was a risk of contrast induced nephropathy and also there was suspicion of ocial LED lesion, so surgery was thought to be a better option. But surgery was declined by the surgical team because of renal impairment. When the syntax score is calculated, it was around 20 excluding the ocial LID. And this put the patient in the low risk group with a comparable result of both PCI and surgery. Even the Syntax 2 score, which take into consideration the renal function, showed comparable result. But our main concern was contrast-induced nephropathy. So we, we decided to do PCI with minimal contrast. To do PCI with minimal contrast, you need two things. First, a diagnostic angiogram that should be placed in front of the operator to be used as a roadmap. Second, intravascular imaging to assess size, location, length, and result of the procedure. We started with the RCA. Engagement was confirmed without contrast using the location and the wire course with the diagnostic angiogram as a roadmap. After passing the wire, IVAS was done, and this is the pullback. It showed, this is the distal RCA, but it showed a lesion in the mid part that was not shown by diagnostic angiography. This is it. This is further pullback at the mid part of the RCA. And then we come to the most tight part. This is it. There is some calcification. And then the proximal part of the RCA. And it also shows the plaque extending up to the ostium of the RCA. Doing PCI without contrast is all about landmarks. So when we did the IVAS, we chose our distal landing zone for the stent and mark that on a fluoroscopy using the IVAS dot. And this is another landmark for the mid lesion. We pre-dilate it with balloon 2.5 and then 3.0. The difficulty was when we decided to stent from the ostium of, of the RCA because landmarking was difficult. So we decided to use a floating wire technique taking multiple views. The stent 3.5 by 30 was deployed and inflated to higher pressure, then post dilated to higher pressure with ostial flaring, IVAS was repeated and showed good extent expansion and opposition. And the most importantly, it showed good ostial coverage. We'll come to it. Good, you see good ostial coverage of the ostium 
with a single stent strut protruding into the aorta. We were unsure about the mid lesion, so we did angiography, and this cost us an extra 4 cc of contrast. We stented this part, did overlap inflation, and this is the final result. To make sure that there is no edge dissection or perforation. Then we engage the left system and wire the cirque again with the diagnostic angiogram as a roadmap. We did IVAS and here we use two landmarks. One was the a second wire that put in a larger branch of the of the OM because we wanted to avoid the stenting at the bifurcation. The other landmark was the dot of the IVAS catheter itself. We knew we, we had a good landing zone after the bifurcation, as shown here in this frame. And the other frame shows the bifurcation. This is the wire in the branch of the OM. The artery prepared, predilated, stented, using 3.5 by 20, the stent here is deployed, was dilated using NC balloon, inflated up to 18 atmosphere, and this is the final result. The lesion in the mid part of the circumflex was non-critical by IVAS. For the LID, we crossed in the usual way and did IVAS using diagnostic angiogram as a landmark. We also passed a wire into the diagonal. The IVAS was done, it showed a large LID with diffuse plaque and calcification, but the lumen was wide. This is some lesion distal to the most critical part, and here is the most critical part of the LID, and this is the pull pack. Here comes the proximal part of the LED, and then we assess the ostium. The proximal part calcified, but white lumen, and this is the ostium of the LED. It measured, let's show you. This is the ostium of the LED. It measured about 7 mm in area. So it, it seems to be non-critical. And this made the procedure easier. We predilated the most critical part, then decided our marks using the IVAS dot. Here the distal landing zone, and this is the dot of the IVAS catheter for the proximal landing zone. The length of the stent was estimated from the distance between the two landing two landmarks, but also from automatic pullback of the IVAS catheter. By automatic pullback, it measured around 38 millimeter, but we wanted to avoid this most calcific part, but not very critical. So we use a 26 millimeter uh, length stent. 4 by 26 millimeter. The stent was deployed and inflated. The diagonal was recrossed and dilated by 1.5 millimeter balloon. We couldn't advance the IVAS catheter into the diagonal, so it didn't do further dilatation by larger balloons. The stent was post dilated to high pressure. Repeat IVAS showed a good stent expansion without edge dissection. This is it, the stent, good stent expansion.
and this is the final result there is some impingement on the osseum of the diagonal but the result was seems to be good the patient was discharged the next so in conclusion PCI can be done with minimal amount of contrast if good intravascular imaging is used and appropriate landmarks are applied and thank you